Thanks to the chairman for introduction. Thanks SID for your very kind invitation. It's a great honor for me to be here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I come from Renox, mainland China. My English name is Quintilin. I have devoted myself into OIT development for 22 years. Ever since I joined the OIT research group at Tsinghua University in 1996, the past two decades witnessed how OIT technology went forward, matured, and made big hits. At the same time, I myself changed a lot. So, yeah, yeah. Look at this picture. I had dark and thick hair when I was in university 20 years ago. <laughs> in contrast, this was also me when I was in last display week, Los Angeles, here last year. My hair is getting thinner and thinner, but Vinox already is brighter and brighter. So, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. It's uh, my great pleasure to be here to share with you the pan pan panorama of OID, her past, her present, and her future. To put OID into perspective, we really need to look back at the past three centuries, how the technology evolution occurred. As human beings continuously made breakthrough in technology, we have not only productivity and freedom, but also new media to display information and communicate with each other. In the 18th century, thanks to industrial printing, people at the age of steam had extensive access to information. The 19th century witnessed the electric revolution and movie industry made dynamic images available to the mass population. A hundred years later, we were able to show videos at the desktop of households and started to live a digital life. And now, as the internet of computer and phone matures, we are in the age of IoT. Everything is becoming smarter and better connected. People will consider non-living objects as living things and want to communicate with them. To make it, all the things need a display to show information. And that would bring us to the age of ubiquitous display. Ubiquitous display, I think, is the right diction for today's display industry. Look around, you will find at least one piece of screen somewhere, but People's classical view of display is related to TV, cell phone, and notebook, etc. As IoT develops, more things start to have displays. Just look at the smart cup on the right up corner. With a curved display, it might be a surprise for some of you. You can easily check up your speech phone notes when you appear to be drinking a cup of tea. Car is the next big area where more displays, larger and better displays, will be used. Look at the button concept at the left bottom corner. It has a 49 inch screen in the front, which will greatly change the in-car experience. I would not elaborate on all these different display types. I think you get the point. Display is everywhere and is ubiquitous. Now, let's look at how OID fits into the ubiquitous display. Last year, Wienox organized a design contest for OID application. What I'm showing here is just a couple of examples from hundreds of great ideas. The picture on the right top corner shows a t-shirt with OID flexible display that can help people who suffer from hearing challenge or a failure to
to communicate with the world. Another example is the rollable virtual piano on the right bottom corner. A pretty music lover will no longer have trouble taking her beloved piano on her trips. And the most impressive idea might be the blushes on Sophia's face. She's so capable and intelligent that people would like to give her citizenship. Yet, I think a flexible display on her face would be a fun touch for her identity as a citizen. Now, let's take a look, close look how ubiquitous display will affect our some products we are familiar with. As to TV, the CRT is already outdated. Today, we are already used to the flat panel TV with technologies like OLED, laser projection, and mini LED, you will enjoy TVs that are brighter, thinner, and bigger. In the future, flexible TV is also possible so that you can roll it into a screw. For pad and notebook, we have much more to expect in the ubiquitous display time. With interactive display touch, we have already made the traditional notebook lighter and easy to carry. Going forward, we will find notebook with a football display and even with infolding and outfolding feature. Eventually, we might be able to make a screw or notebook with a rollable display. Let's also talk about smartphone changes in the last decade. Steve Jobs is a genius. A 3.5 inch screen opened a new page in the history of cell phone. Ever since then, smartphone screens are getting bigger and bigger with higher and higher resolution. Before you even notice, people are not satisfied with over 90% screen to body ratio. And I think a real full screen smartphone with 100% screen to body ratio is just around the corner. It is the magic touch that turned feature phone into smartphone. As display substrate upgrades from glass to plastic, the future smartphone will have more possibilities of outlook. We have seen mobile phone changed from non-touch screen to touch screen, then to large screen, notch screen, and full screen. In the next few years, football and even rollable smartphones we are unfolded in front of the world. Similar trends can also be observed in smart wearable products. The devices upgraded from a basic wearable to smart wearable with independent networking. They will become even more intelligent and support better end-to-end -end connection with AI devices. Display have evolved from rigid display with 2D cover class to flexible with 3D cover class. In future, the, di the display of smart wearable products will have bigger active area and higher resolution. The vehicle display screens grew out of nothing. As car develops from 100% manual driving to drive assistance and to a certain level of automatic driving, how driver interacts with the car also changed dramatically. From a gate-only car, we first add a small screen, then larger screen, and then multiple screens. The auto OEMs are designing cabin with flexible OLED screens and even transparent screens now. It's if fully automation becomes real, car will be defined as the third space outside of home and office. Just think about how we are going to enjoy our time in the third space. The vehicle display is undergoing profound changes in recent years. According to the current trend of display technology, the evolution of vehicle display screens will eventually change our traditional outstanding towards cars, just like Mr. Steve Jobs has changed our cell phone. 
a giant, a giant in the auto industry will also appear to change our automobile. The ubiquitous display means we have infinite possibilities for display, such as rigid display, flexible display, transparent, holographic. Various forms will be applied to various devices. However, there may be still some display technologies that we have not yet explored and which will become part of the ubiquitous screen in the future. The role of the screen at that time will also change dramatically. This is why we thought the ubiquitous display has the infinite possibilities. The screen will not only be an interface between display and the human, it will become an important interface for smart information interaction. Now we have already started to use the screen integrated with different interactive features. For example, touch controls, 3D touch, on the screen fingerprint identification, for screen sound. In the future, more functions will be integrated into the screen. The screen will become a part of intelligent interaction. Speaking of display di diversity, there are quite few different display technologies. Depending on different applications and specific requirements, they have their own strengths and weakness. So let's briefly review each of these technology in the chart. From the most advanced to the most matured, holographic display is one kind of stereoscopic 3D display technology is the most sophisticated, but still in an early stage in my view. Already on silicon, a great display technology with a good resolution and a fast switch time will find a good match to VR application if reliability and cost can be solved. Micro LED is a new and emerging promising display technology in the recent years. In this dis display week, it's great to see there will be four technical sections dedicated to the micro LED on Thursday, including material, manufacturing, device, and system integration, etc. If manufacturing process technology can be solved, such as mass transfer, it will find great application in small size for AR and smartwatch, large size for TV. QLED is another new and emerging technology. It has a very similar structure for OLED. I was surprised to see that uh, there are several uh, big monitor uh, developed with uh, QD, uh, uh, quantum display technology, at this, uh, in the next exhibition room. I was wondering whether it's uh, electroluminescence or photoluminescence. So again, reliability will be a key roadblock for its real application. Mini LED is a very potential large size display technology with low cost. LCOS is the technology relatively matured for micro display application, but with poor contrast ratio. This projection is affordable for large size display, but its contrast is a big concern. No doubt that OLED has good features, self-efficient, self-emission, self wide color gamut, high con contrast ratio, thinner and lighter, flexible, and so on. But it still has a long way to go. For example, blue lifetime, large size application, yield and cost, Etc. LCD is a mature display technology with low cost advantage, but its growth and expanding may reach a plateau in a few years. Now, let's talk about display market. The display industry is, is now dominated by uh, LCD and OLED. Actually, uh, in history, this industry is always uh, dominated by two main displays. 10 years ago, look at the small chart. It was a CRT and LCD. LCD very quickly took over the market. Today, they are LCD and OLED. These two account for more than 99% of the market. All the other, total, the total of all the others is less than 1%. As just mentioned, in a few years, LCD's growth and expanding may reach a plateau. But OLED, 
will be and should be a growth engine in this display industry. Continue to talk about the market. Let's look at these two charts. The left chart is the LCD capacity by region, and the right one is the AMOLED capacity by region. From the left side, we could learn that the LCD production capacity in mainland China has been ranked number one in the world. On already side, there's no doubt that Korea is leading the way, but mainland China is doing a great catch up. Speaking of OAD, let's look at his male students. Dr. Qing Tang and his former colleague, Mr. Steve, invented OAD technology in 1987. 10 years later, in 1997, Pioneer developed a car rodeo with a PM rodeo panel, which was the first commercial OAD product in the whole world. Later, in 2008, Samsung started to use EMOD as the main display of the cell phone. And last year, Apple adopted EMOD panel to iPhone 10. This is a encouraging news for the whole industry. In terms of the worldwide EMOD production size, all the production, all the panel production lines are in Asia. Up to now, there are 14 lines in, Mian, in mainland China including generation 5, 4.5, 5 5.5, and generation 6. And this number will increase, increase in the coming few years. Let's look at the material and equipment. The major OLED materials suppliers and equipment makers are from Japan, Korea, US, and Europe. Here's UDC from US, Mocha from uh, Europe, and it is from Japan. And they are all very important OLED material suppliers. And the very famous division system maker, Canon Toki, is from Japan too. Regarding OLED technology, here is the patent allocation. Nearly 90% are owned by Japan and Korea. And the United States is the country where most patents are granted, followed by Korea. Now, let's come to the OLED development history in mainland China. Dozens of universities and institutes started to research OLED in 1990s. Professor Chiu Yong founded an OLED research group in Tsinghua University in 1996. Later, he founded Vernox. The first PMOD production line was set up in mainland China in 2008. The first generation 5.5 EMOD mass production line was built in 2014. Ever since 2015, several generation six mass production lines have been under construction. Here, Let's take a close look at China's EMOD production status. Vernox is a company set up and devoted to OLED display, which can supply both PMOD and EMOD products in volume. Vernox ranks number one in PMOD shipments in the whole world, and EMOD outputs is number one in mainland China in 2017. It uses EMOD panel product is focused on small wearable application. BOE is the largest LCD manufacturer in the whole world at present. And in the last few years, she announced to build four generation six AMOD production lines. Tema has different types of pr products, STN, TFT LCD, and AMOD, mainly focused on medium and small sized panel. More recently, CSOT announced to build a new generation six AMOD production line and they are very interested in printing technology. And there are another two players who has claimed the, pr the production business plan. So let's look at the AMOD market share in mainland China. According to Sigma Tail data, Wernox ranks number one in AMOD panel air output last year. EDU is the second, 
BOE is the third, TMA is the fourth. Please uh, let me uh, introduce a little bit more about Vinox as a typical showcase of Chinese AMRD industry. As already introduced before, Vinox was founded based on the OID Research Group in Tsinghua University and has been working on OID for 22 years. Currently, Vinox has four factories with about 6,000 plus employees, has applied more than 3,400 patents and has been the leader of four already international standards. In addition to these four factories, Wilnox has set up two R&D lines, D1 and D2. Therefore, Wilnox is able to cooperate with upstream and downstream partners to develop new material, new process, and new technologies. Here is the way to develop new Digital technology, from basic research to pilot production, and then to mass production is our way to success. This process works very well, and we will stick on it. For example, we started to research PMROID from the lab, and then pilot production. Finally, in 2008, mass production for PMROID. At AMROID, also in the same way, we started to research AMRD and set up the pilot line in 2009. Then we built the generation 5.5 AMRD production lines. And then now generation six, from rigid to flexible, from small size to bigger size. This is the way to success. Of course, any new product development is driven by the market and we are very conscious of it. And thanks to our team's endless efforts, now our products have been widely used for smartphone, smart wearable, vehicle application, industry application, and medical devices. And more exciting to come. We have been working on flexible AMR technology for quite a few years, and we have recently demonstrated many application concepts. Here are some highlights I'd like to share with you such as this ebook and smart speaker. Here's a video for our 7.2 inches flexible and football four module demonstration. The world's first bi-directional foldable single axis AMO LED display module, which owns the in-curved bending radius of three millimeters, the X-curved bending radius of five millimeters, its bending times can exceed over 260,000 times, with its technology being at the forefront of the world. The full module is as thin as 0.2 millimeters, which can be arbitrarily folded depending on the terminal product design solutions. It can open up the visual boundary with its high screen occupation ratio, breaking the limitation of space, letting the vision go with your heart. This screen can achieve humans longing for the future display. The world's first bi-directional foldable single axis AMO LED display module, according to the technology of future, is now exploring the region of infinite. Thank you. Some of its key features are listed here. The area size is uh, 7.2 inches and the bottom border is uh, two millimeter. Infolding radius is three millimeter. Outfolding radius is five millimeter. And the folding time is over 260,000 times. Surface hardness is up to uh, seven H. And we have a booth here. Uh, please come and stop by uh, the number 945. I have talked a lot about the history and the current development of Vinox. Please allow me to share with you our strategy. The IC strategy stands for innovation, skill, efficiency, and endeavor. Innovation is a driving force and the core strength of Vinox. Throughout the years, we have kept investing in this core strength, and we will continue to do that in the future. You know, OID is a very difficult technology and a tough business. Without innovation, you cannot succeed. We also take skill seriously. 
we would like to ramp up our production capacity so that we can provide the amazing already display with a reasonable price. Scale is always related to the cost. With a bigger com capacity, then you can get cheaper materials. We view Wernox as a startup company, and we always strive to improve our efficiency to better fuel our customer needs. And Endeavor shows our courage and determination. We are committed to bring the best OID to the world. With the IC strategy of Wernox, we will make sure you will see better. Speaking of already technology evaluation, we are mainly, there are mainly three types of already related to consumer electronics based on their panel or display size, namely small size for smartphone and smart wearable, medium size for pad and notebook, and large size for TV. As to mobile phone screens, there are two trends, both developed from current cloud panel. One trend goes further toward notch panel and 100% full screen, while the other toward more flexible products, foldable and rollable display. As to pad or notebook, foldable display technology will be more important as consumers would like to have a bigger screen to operate and easier to carry. These upcoming products may include one access folding pad, two access folding pad, etc. As to TV, high resolution is more welcome from 4K to 8K, and the audience would like to have a high quality display, resolution, color gamut, contrast ratio, HDR, which will help them enjoy watching TV. The future possible rollable TV will be the great way to go. Well, of course, we will face lots of challenges for already related product development and applications. For the larger sized already display applications, we will face issues on high resolution materials, oxide backplane, and inkjet printing technology. We will find better and creative ways to solve these critical issues. Turning to the already flexible and affordable display again, the challenges remain, including foldable product format, strength, stress management, foldable structure design, and reliability. Just name a few. In regards to foldable product format, we must consider if such product will gain market and be accepted by customers. Is it user-friendly, affordable, and reliable? Also, cost is a big concern for already related consumer electronics. With already panel and many new features, the iPhone X, iPhone 10 is also uh, is already the Super Bowl winner. If we can make the iPhone less expensive, it will get higher scores. We could learn from uh, Mr. Elon Musk. In his big SpaceX rocket project, he and his team effectively reduced the over cost of rocket launching. It's now merely one-tenth of original price. So we have our own story about the uh, cost control of PM already. So in the history, the average sales price ESP of PM already is very high. At that time, PM already is, is expensive at the early stage for quite a long time. The ESP is, is 10 US dollars something. And later, seven US dollar, then five, three US dollar. Do you know the current price? Less than one dollar. How we make it? You know. So point one, we cooperated with our deposition system partners to develop to develop a very fast machine. The output is twice as the normal one. Point two, we uh, used the, the high efficiency material then matched with a smaller chip, I see, in order to save the silicon material, you know, and we reuse some expensive materials. Third one, we redone the, the process, so uh, to, in order to save the energy, you know. All these actions result in the cost. And uh, in the past years, we can earn money 
about 15% uh, uh, net profits since 2012. That's a great work, you know. So let's come, come back to the iPhone 10. Already panel cost is estimated at one third of the total component cost. If we can find a better way to reduce, to reduce the present cost by half, we believe that already will be more widely used in smartphone. We are confident about that. Collaboration is always important for already technology and product development. Actually, in already flexible displays, there are many components, including FPC, coverless, polarizer, which heavily rely on the upstream supply chain. Here, as an already panel maker, I would like to take this great opportunity to emphasize we would like to have unlimited technology collaboration with both upstream and downstream to establish and to promote a healthy ecosystem. Our hope is to is nourishing the next generation materials and equipment development with upstream partners, fostering future display products with the downstream consumer electronics makers, and producing cost competitive display products through technology innovation. We believe that already's golden time is really coming, and we hope we can bring this remarkable technology to the ordinary consumers around the world for them to see better. Finally, my hearty thanks go to two very important people in my life. Professor Chiu Yun is more than a supervisor to me. He's more than a father. Upon my graduation in 1996, I was in tuition debt. Professor Chiu paid it off so that I can continue my research life without any financial concern when he himself was poorly paid at that time. He supported me financially and spiritually. Only, only a father can manage that. So I am really much appreciated about Professor Chiu Yun. My next special appreciation goes to Dr. Tang. Without his direction and mentoring, I would not fall in love with OLED. He announced that OLED is his life, and OLED is also my life. Thank you, Dr. Tang. Thanks for listening.